I'm here to introduce not only one of the all-time greats in Canadian broadcasting, but an indispensable mentor and a beloved friend. Rick Clough is an award-winning journalist who hosted the early edition on CBC Radio 1 in Vancouver from 1997 until his retirement at the end of last year. As a host, Rick's known for his keen wit, jovial personality, and sharp journalistic instincts. It was those characteristics and many more that helped catapult the early edition to number one in this tough Vancouver radio market, and that's where we've stayed for many years. Prior to his time in Vancouver, Rick was a network sports commentator for the CBC out of Toronto, and for more than 20 years, he traveled the world from the Arctic Circle to the South Pacific, covering Canadian athletes and some of the biggest sporting events in the world, the World Series, the Stanley Cup Finals, the Super Bowl, the Olympics. Basically, if you can name a sporting event, Rick, Rick's been there. Now, all those accomplishments and those accolades are easily enough to put this guy in the Hall of Fame of uh, broadcasting, if there were one. Actually, you are in a CFL sport, uh, sports broadcasting <laughs> Hall of Fame now that I think of it. Uh, but the thing not everyone knows about Rick is that he's always been dedicated to giving his time to the up-and-comers, to passing along his knowledge and expertise to the next generation. And I can say sincerely that I wouldn't be where I am in my CBC career today without his thoughtful guidance. Rick has given countless hours in helping myself and many others in our quest to become the best that we can be, and I would argue that that is his true mark of greatness. So here he is, distinguished broadcaster and devoted mentor, Rick Clough. Lesson one, always be nice to the people you work with. You don't know when they might have the last word. <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. That was very nice. President Kinlick, members of the Platform Party, ladies and gentlemen, family, friends, and members of the BCIT class of 2018. Yeah. What a thrill it is to be here this morning to speak to you. I have finally made it to a BCIT graduation ceremony. <laughs> I say that because 40 plus years ago, long before most of you were born, long before most of your parents had graduated high school, I applied for admission to BCIT. <laughs> now back then you wrote the school asking for an information and application package. You waited a couple of weeks for it to arrive. You filled it out and you mailed it back. Yes, mailed it back. <laughs> this was before the internet, before emails, before text messages. This was so long ago a person called a letter carrier actually walked up to the front door of your house and slipped it through a slot in the door. The whole process took weeks, and when my final letter arrived at my home in Willowdale, Ontario, I remember it being fairly thin. <laughs> Not normally good news. Just by feeling the envelope, I knew there was no orientation package included, <laughs> no course outline, no reading list, no welcome to BCIT letter, no. My letters began, Dear Mr. Clough, Thank you for your interest in BC and IT. Unfortunately, and you don't have to read the rest. <laughs> I went through high school and played basically three things. I played football, I played cello, I played hooky. <laughs> I'm one of those that offered proof that not everybody gets straight A's or B's <laughs> or worse. However it all worked out, I eventually made it to another post-secondary institution, and today I'm here so happy to be part of and share in this experience with you. So what can I say to you this morning that will offer you encouragement and be of some help as you embark on your career? You have to know you're entering a workforce in a very turbulent time. The workplace is changing, and it's doing so very quickly. In this digital age, of lightning-fast communication, our sphere of knowledge is expanding at an exponential rate. Time and distance are no longer barriers to understanding. The idea of a global village is no longer theoretical, it's here. Competition, cooperation can come from the other side of the planet in seconds. Now, add to that the notion 
But we as a country are on the verge of entering a global trade war. The world order is changing. Truth is being challenged. International stock markets are reacting. The markets don't like change, and they reflect that uncertainty. The business community reacts, investment slows, and jobs are affected. No, I don't say this to scare you, but rather to reassure you, because we've been through this before. Also, keep in mind that as you enter the workforce, you have a competitive edge. You graduate today from an internationally recognized, world-class institution, and your credentials are respected anywhere and everywhere you choose to work. President Kinlick, the board, the administrative staff, your teachers, the faculty, have all worked hard to strengthen and reinforce the reputation of BCIT, and in so doing, have helped prepare the way for you. Yes, you've worked hard. You've met the standard, and now you are ready to take your place. And along the way, as already mentioned, you'll be meted, or greeted rather, by alumni of BCIT. Tens of thousands of alums are out there. They stand as testament to what's possible and what awaits you. Case in point, as host of the early edition these past 21 years at CBC Vancouver, <clears throat> I worked along, alongside dozens of BCIT graduates. Just to look at the list, program directors, executive producers, senior show producers, associate producers, reporters, and hosts. You people are everywhere. <laughs> and today, you become part of that large international network. Use it to your advantage. Now, I want to take a moment this morning to tell you a little about my career and the importance of yes and no. Two small words, at first glance, two insignificant words, but two words that might have, could have a huge impact on your career. You will be challenged by yes. You will be tempted by no. When confronted with an opportunity that you consider perhaps out of your reach, you will be tempted to say, no, I'm not qualified. No, I'm not ready. No, it's too complicated. It's too hard. No, I don't want to do that. And sometimes you'll be challenged by, yeah, I think I can do that. Yes, I'll give that a try. It might not be easy, but I guarantee you it's more satisfying to say yes. You can't be afraid of failure because if you are, you'll not continue to learn. You will stunt your own growth, and you could limit your future advancement in the workplace. It was Thomas Edison who once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. When I graduated from journalism school, two reporters at the Washington Post had just brought down the President of the United States. The dogged investigative reporting of the Watergate scandal in 1972 by Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein resulted in the impeachment of President Richard Nixon. Now, two years later, Woodward and Bernstein co-authored a book called All the President's Men that eventually became a major motion picture. That book became required reading in every political science class and journalism school across North America. It had a major impact on my life because I wanted to be the next Woodward or Bernstein. My first job at the CBC was in the National Radio Newsroom. I was a copy clerk. I was going to be, though, a parliamentary reporter and eventually a foreign correspondent. My career path had been carved out, or so I thought. However, less than 18 months in, the news director came to me and said, Clough, we're down a sports reporter. You played football. You're a bit of a jock. You want the job? My first reaction was to say no. See, the sports department's sort of like the toy department in a newsroom. <laughs> I saw myself as a serious journalist. Any chance I might have had a part of on Hill could have been dashed if I went in that direction. So I asked if I could think about it. I paused, eventually said yes, but agreed to do it for just two years so I could get my career back on track. That two-year assignment turned into 20 years and provided me the opportunity to travel the world following the accomplishments of Canadian athletes. That included a number of trips to Moscow in the then Soviet Union behind the old Iron Curtain. Back then, news reporters weren't welcomed in the USSR, but the Soviets loved having Canadian hockey teams come visit, and the sports reporters that came with them were viewed as a necessary evil. 
I was lucky enough to be a necessary evil about half a dozen times. I enjoyed it every day. I learned something every day. I laughed every day. And I had a front row seat to history almost every day. Jeremy gave you some of the highlights. Eight Olympic Games, Stanley Cup Finals, Grey Cup Championships, Super Bowls, the Masters, the British and US Open Golf Championships. I covered the Toronto Blue Jays' very first game, April 7th, 1977. 15 years later, I traveled with the team as it won its first World Series in 1992 and again in 1993. I got to pilot the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> True story. If you got time later, I'll tell you. But this is all because I didn't say no. In 1966, following, or 1996 rather, following the Olympic Games in Atlanta, I was asked to leave sports and move here to Vancouver to host the early edition. Once again, my impulse was to say no. Are you kidding? Eastern sportscaster does Western current affairs? Have you laughed out of town? Again, I thought about it. This time I was asked for a three-year commitment. We decided to sell it to the kids as a family adventure. That three-year commitment became a 20-year love affair with Vancouver and the Lower Mainland. It led to 50,000 interviews and me asking more than half a million questions. I've had the opportunity to speak with prime ministers, presidents, premiers, celebrities of every kind. I interviewed Mr. Rogers about the death of our mutual friend, Ernie Coombs, who you would know as Mr. Gressup. Some of the best interviews, though, were from regular people from all walks of life, who, folks who had a story to tell. And in July of 2003, we packed up the show. We went to Prague in the Czech Republic to witness and broadcast the decision of the International Olympic Committee as I awarded the 2010 Winter Games to Vancouver. I never got to report from Parliament Hill but I came pretty damn close to being a foreign correspondent, all because I didn't say no. You're gonna to have to be flexible, be open to all opportunities, be confident in your ability, have faith in your education, have the courage to say yes. And speaking of courage, an appeal now to those of you in broadcast and media communications, those of you from Connie Monk's journalism program with aspirations of a career in the news media, you face a new challenge. You enter a profession right now under attack. Journalists are being vilified, their work disrespected, the truth is being questioned, and people are losing faith. Now granted, much of this is spilling over the border from the south, but you need to know we need you as journalists now more than ever before. So I ask you to do your job, hold the decision makers accountable, and rise to the challenge. So here you are, in a few minutes, you're gonna walk across the stage and receive a diploma and begin the next chapter of your life. But, as has been pointed out, you haven't been alone in this quest. Behind you, above you, and beside you are moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, children, loved ones who have supported you along the way. I ask you all now to stand, find your family, and give them a round of applause as your thanks. <laughs> and moms and dads, I give you another photo op. So this next chapter is gonna be very exciting. And you know, I give my eye teeth to go along for the ride. It doesn't seem like that long ago when I was a graduate sitting in a convocation much like this, I had no idea of what the future held. And look how far we've come in these past 40 years. When I began my career, we had manual typewriters and used carbon paper. If you don't know what that is, Google it. Computers of the day filled entire rooms and had a limited database. I remember seeing my first compact disc and marveling at its capabilities. We read about portable telephones and futurists who said, someday we'll all carry a phone in our pocket. Do you realize the phones we hold in our hands today have 10 times the computing power 
that the NASA astronauts had during the Apollo missions to the moon. And you're hearing this from a guy who still struggles with his laptop. We bought a new machine recently, opened it up, and the instructions said, hit any key to start. I wasted 15 minutes of my life looking for the any key. <laughs> You're about to begin a great adventure. Congratulations. You are the new leaders of the future. And there is a big, bold, exciting world out there waiting for you. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Never stop learning. Always say yes. Godspeed. Good luck. Bon chance. <laughs>